Welcome to Discord. I am Susil Pandey. Osho Rajneesh is one of the most famous and to some extent controversial philosophers of 20th century. Osho introduced a totally different vision in philosophy. Osho is against renunciation. He is in favor of celebration. Then, why Osho is controversial and what is the crux of his philosophy? Today, I am going to talk in this regard with Osho's younger brother and his prominent disciple Osho Sailendra. Osho Sailendra was born in 1955 in Madhya Pradesh of India. He is active to spread the philosophy of Osho throughout the world now. Welcome to the show. You are a younger brother, a disciple of Osho Rajnis. Yes. Why you become the disciple of Oso? In ordinary world, people choose something. In spiritualism, it does not happen the same way. For example, in ordinary world, a student chooses the teacher. He chooses which coaching class to join. He chooses which college to enter in. In spiritualism, the master chooses the disciple. It is just the opposite. The disciple is a blind person. He is ignorant. He does not know. The master has eyes. He has vision. How the blind person can choose who has eyes? He doesn't know. So only a person who has eyes, he can choose. So this question does not apply in spiritualism that why you became a disciple and how did he choose the master? It is just the opposite. The master chooses the disciple. Does it mean that you have not chosen the Osho, Osho yes. has chosen you as a disciple? Yes. That's how every disciple feels. I am ignorant. How can I choose who has wisdom? A wise person can choose. He knows who is worth choosing. So every disciple feels in the same way that it is due to the grace of the Master. He has chosen me. This is his compassion on me. Yeah. You are a brother of Osho Rajni, a sibling. You are a very authentic person to give me about the information about the Oso. Yes, you can ask our, anything. Our, our audience also want to know yes. many things about Oso because he is one of the famous philosophers or we can say one of the most notorious also, mm -hmm. okay? controversial also philosopher in the 20th century. And you are the very authentic person to give me some information about Oso. I am very, I am feeling blessed to hire with you in my program. Let me know, what is the crux philosophy of Oso? His basic philosophy is very new idea. He says materialism and spiritualism are not two different things. We should not ignore our body and mind in order to achieve to the soul, to the godliness within ourselves. In the past, it was thought that materialism and spiritualism are two different fields. Those who are interested in the physical pleasures, they should renounce, they should forget about the spiritualism. And those who are interested in meditation, in samadhi, in finding God within themselves, they should ignore and renounce the world. This was the old philosophy. So almost half of the world, we can say the Eastern and the Western world, one is in favor of science, one is in favor of religion. One is for the body, one is for the soul. Osho brings a new philosophy, a totally different vision. He says there is no need to divide. Just like our body and soul are living together. Divide between spiritualism and materialism. And materialism, yes. Yeah, they are very interwoven, inter integrated. Yes, they are integrated, united. Mm -hmm. Just like if the religious people say God is the creator of the world, he is running the world, he yeah. has not renounced the world, why should we? Yeah. God has not renounced the world, he is still running the world. It means he is interested. So who are we to say that we are not interested in the world and we will renounce the family and we will not earn the money and we will, we will not work? So that's totally wrong attitude. So Osho is against renunciation. He is in favor of celebration. Let us celebrate the whole life. Mm -hmm. Of course, our body is also ours. Our soul is also ours. We should go in meditation to find the soul. We should mm -hmm. take care of the physical needs as well. It means we have to address the physical need as well as spiritual need yes. in real life situation. Yes. So this is something new. It has never happened in the past. 
all the religious people have been against the world yeah. and those who are in the favor of world they were missing the spiritualism mm -hmm. in the past our spiritual leaders for example religious leaders they denied the physical need they peaced that we have to negate the physical need yeah. we can exa for example yeah. we can quote just lord buddha and mahavira mm -hmm. they renounced their kingdom they stopped doing their they activities as a king and they just went to the forest and did meditation only so that was one half the other half is the people living in the world yeah. they think that meditation is not for me i have to just take care of the family and i have to earn money and run my shop that's all that's how the life finished there so these are the two halves mm -hmm. humanity has been living in a very schizophrenic way yeah a kind of osho brings a synthesis mm -hmm. he says don't divide live a complete life which includes physical mental emotional and spiritual all together we should not escape from the physical life also yes. the spiritual life also yeah. that is his crox meaning of yes. his philosophy yeah. then why osho is so notorious he is not notorious he is just very simple he is saying the truth as it is but we have been in habit of listening the half truth only can i can i interrupt you notorious yes. in the sense that controversial why osho anything is new any new idea creates controversy because it yeah. is against the past mm -hmm. so anything and even in the scientific field people who bring new theory new hypothesis they create mm -hmm. controversy so it is bound to happen whenever something new something original comes in immediately the crowd becomes against it yeah. and so many controversies start for, ex for example the person who said for the first time the earth is round is very controversial of course <laughs> the same thing happened he was killed side he was punished for it yeah for it <laughs> he was burned alive also yes <laughs> he only that reason alive. only for one reason because the whole crowd believed that earth is flat yeah the whole world believed the sun goes around the earth and the man who said it's not true the earth is moving around the sun yeah. it created controversy i i agree with you but also salendra what do you say to those person who criticize also as sex guru as role soul guru as a liar i would say that those people have not listened or read osho's literature they are ignorant that's why they are saying such remarks otherwise it is very simple as i have already said osho does not deny the physical body sex is part of it he accepts it so what is wrong in it what's wrong in it hmm. if we over celebrate it you know what happens nothing goes over hmm. there is a limit to everything you cannot over eat <laughs> there is a limit to your stomach you can feed only you cannot over drink water you cannot drink buckets of water there is a limit the body says no body stops itself the body has a natural instinct a natural wisdom we are to stop and it happens so yeah. so there is nothing wrong in it he is also an enlightened person yes how can you say well if you read his books if you listen to his discourses if you just see his one of the videos and you will agree with me that he is the most enlightened person ever <laughs> he gives such enlightened ideas such original ideas Yeah. with logical thinking with mm -hmm. all arguments in support is there any connection between giving logically or reasoning proving something and being enlightened no it's not necessary it is not necessary a scientist is very logical very okay. argumentative but he is not enlightened i agree with you he is very logical i have read so many books and i am very impressed with him also he is very logical he has given so many strong reason and he proved what he claimed but it is said that his life is not consistent of course a man who lives with wisdom he will live moment to moment this is his basic philosophy to live moment to moment of course he will not be in continuity with his own past i was just this morning giving the example of albert einstein he created a mathematical formula of cosmological constant yeah. to prove why this universe is so static why it is so so he was proving 
it took about 15 years to make the mathem mathematical formulation mm -hmm. that cosmological constant is equal to 1. Yeah. But just after 5 years, new kind of equipments were made and he saw the universe is expanding. It is not constant. It, it so what to do with that theory now? It, it happens in science. Yes. And philosophy and religion, for example, in the life of Oso also. Uh, he was born in 1931 as Rajnish Chandra Mohan Jain. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. Then he changed his name as Acharya Rajnish from 1960s to the yes. 1960s. And Bhagavan Sri Rajnish during the 1970s and also since 1990 the death. Yes. Why he had changed his name so frequently? When he was changing his function, hmm. Rajnish Chandra Mohan was the name given by the parents. Okay? Yeah. Achari in Hindi means philo uh, professor. professor. When he was working in the university as a professor, mm -hmm. then he was called Achari's niece. And at that time, he was going all over the country in India mm -hmm. from cities to cities. And he was giving discourses. He was mm -hmm. teaching. So he was performing the function of a teacher, a lecturer, a professor mm -hmm. in the university as well as in the universe. So his name was changed to Acharya Rajneesh. People called him Acharyji because he was the professor. Yeah. So that's the name given by the people. Again, when he stopped being a professor, yeah. he resigned from the university mm -hmm. and he started working with the disciples. Mm -hmm. Disciples called him Bhagwan. Mm -hmm. This is the name given by the disciples. Mm -hmm. Five disciples, the mm -hmm. master, the guru is equal to Bhagwan. Mm -hmm. You may have heard the famous Sanskrit saying, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara. Yeah. So the master is equal to three gods, the whole trinity. So this is the feeling of a disciple. Yeah. Is your god? Well, it depends how you define god. There are two different meanings of god. Okay? One tradition says god is the climax of the human consciousness flowering. Yeah. When a human being will flower, blossom to its peak, that is the godliness. Mm -hmm. And the, another tradition says, God is in the beginning, not in the end. It is like the seed, not like the flower. So they say, the God started the universe, God made the universe, God created the world. They say God was in the beginning. And the other traditions of Buddha and Mahavira, the Buddhist and Jaina religion, they put God in the end, not in the beginning. Mm -hmm. They deny that there was any creator, they say God will happen in the end when our human consciousness will reach to its climax, yeah. to a complete blossoming, that, we can that enlightenment, Nirvana that is called godliness. Mm. So in that sense, Buddha is called Bhagwan, Mahavira is called Bhagwan, although they don't believe in God. Yeah. I mean in Hindu God. So similarly, Osho is called Bhagwan. Yeah. Osho Salendra, isn't it a controversy, a contradiction between because being enlightened is be going above the ego and saying myself is egoist also. Myself, God is egoist also. Isn't that contradictory? No, this is the also? most simple man who is declaring the truth. If he was egoistic, he will hide the truth. He will not say it because it will create controversy. People become angry. Okay? So he is so simple, he is so honest, he is declaring the truth that he has realized the godliness within himself. Yeah. What's wrong in saying so? And when he is saying so, he does not mean that I am superior, I am higher than you. Yeah. He is saying everybody has the same thing. You go in meditation, you find your consciousness, you will feel divine, you will feel godly. So that's the message hidden behind. Yeah. He is not saying that I am the only one who is Bhagwan? He is saying everybody is Bhagwan. Nobody is else is different than that. Mm -hmm. So that's not ego. That says humble statement. Honest statement. Honest statement, and it is not only about himself. It is about everyone. But his critics say that he is obsessed or somewhat greed. He has greed to the physical, material world, for example, he had so many Rolls Royce cars and how can a person... Nothing belonged to him ever. Please note this fact. Yeah. Nothing ever belonged to him, not even his ashram. Nothing, not a single paisa. He never owned anything, yeah. not a single house. And the house in which he used to live was called guest house. Uh -huh. He was living as a guest. The ashram belonged to somebody else. The cars belong to other people. They have given him as a gift for him to drive. He was not the owner of anything at all. 
But most of the critics attacked him saying that. It's their misinformation what to do. Mm. <laughs> they should find out the truth and only then they should say something. Okay, you are the sibling of Oso. Can you tell me for our audience about his early life, your relationship with Oso? Well, I'm 24 years younger than him. Oh. So I have not seen him as my elder brother ever. Mm -hmm. When I became about 10 years old or 12 years old, I realized him as my master, I felt myself as a disciple. Oh. So I never felt I am his brother mm -hmm. I, and I never had that kind of relationship with him. You had no memory about spending some time as a sibling? I spent time but not as a brother. Yeah, as a disciple. As a disciple only. Oh. So I never asked him any questions. I never requested him to do anything. Whenever I got time, I was sitting silently with him, just mm -hmm. enjoying that very moment of his presence, that was magnetic presence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> his critics also say that his views on marriage and family life never is also contradictory. For example, it is said that he said the, ba the family is the most ugliest institution in the world. This you is can see point? in the world, this is a fact. This is not he, only his statement. You can see the proofs everywhere, in every country, in every religion, in all the societies. The family is the creator of the misery in most of the people's life. I was just handling questions today. There were about more than 100 questions in a public speech. And most of them are concerned with the family troubles. Is that family or nature of human mind? The problem, the problem begins with family. Family is the creator of many problems which are unnecessary. We can live without them. Apart from human beings, all other animals, plants, they are living without family. Of course, there is a role of mother. She, suppose a cat is taking care of the kids. Can I, can only I for some time. Can I interrupt you? That's yeah. why human is civilized being. Because well, this man family. who is doing First World War, who did Second World War, you think this is civilized man? Is the family cause of that? No, there are many, so many other causes, but family is one of them. Hmm. Then what should we do? We, we should negate the family? It can disappear. It will disappear soon. In my and your lifetime, you will see yeah. the institution of marriage disappearing from the world. You may be knowing that it, has already, it is already finished in Sweden. Now, legally, there is no marriage, there is no family, because since last more than 20 years, nobody married in Sweden. Are so they the government stopped that registration office of marriage. Are they happy? They are not happy, but at least they cannot blame the other person. Now you have to think, why, if I am still sad, I am not happy, then something is wrong with me. I have to learn meditation, How I have to learn how to be peaceful. This is my something personal problem. Yeah. In family, we are always blaming the other person. But they blame the system. They blame that we are suffering because we don't have family. Eastern, Eastern people have family and who very is, Who is preventing them to have family? <laughs> they have decided themselves not to marry, not to have families. It is their own choice. Nobody is forcing them. Mm -hmm. But this is going to spread all over the world, what I am saying. Mm -hmm. You may not believe today, but if I meet you again after 15 or 20 years, mm -hmm. you will see the same thing happening in India and Nepal also then we should not get married too, it means. Of Does course, we we should, the institution should be on based on love, not on marriage, yeah. not, not, not on legal bondages. That is ugly. Love is beautiful. Of course, if two people are living with love, that's beautiful. But as soon as the friendship is over, they should depart. Then don't torture each one, mm -hmm. each other. That should be the natural system. And that's how our ancestors were living thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. Only with the idea of personal property, mm -hmm. this institution of family came in, mm -hmm. with the personal property. Because people, when they start having personal property, yeah. they want to give the property to also, their kids. Yeah. And how to make sure that these kids belong to you? Also, Sailendra mm. also died at the age of 58 in 1919. And now we're talking in 2015. Yes. It has already been 25 years since he died. Yes. And how can the principle, the philosophy also, also's philosophy benefiting or giving benefit 
to the such kind of old, which is full of suffering, pain. Yeah. Osho is not saying that he is going to become a masiha or he is going to relieve anybody from suffering. He says you are the cause of your suffering, your mental attitudes, your philosophical, your blind beliefs. They are cause of the suffering, and you have to get rid of them yourself. He is not a masiha. Yeah. He is not working for anyone. He has enjoyed his life, and he has said to everyone that you can enjoy your life too. You have created the hell. You can create the heaven. You are free to do so. That is his basic teaching. Mm -hmm. So he is not the one who is going to redeem everybody from the sufferings. Yeah. We are the cause of all suffering. What he says is, we should not be hypocritical. We should be what we are and accept the physical and material world as well as the spiritual world. That's what he is saying. Yes. Accepting does not mean that we have to ignore them. Accepting means we will take care of them. We will be more sensitive. We will be more responsible, and we will take care of every dimension of our life, mm -hmm. whether physical or spiritual. Yeah. If we follow the path that also has given, or there is no need to follow. Nobody has to become a follower. You have to think. You have to analyze yourself. If yeah. something feels right to you, then it's yours. Then you are not following him. Just like in science, we don't follow anyone. We just read. We listen. Yeah. You can do experiment. You can repeat the experiment. If it comes true, then it that theory, that philosophy does not belong to anyone. Mm -hmm. It becomes okay, everybody's sir, can property. I, can I ask a very personal question about your wedding, for example, garland with the photo, photograph of yes. What does it mean? I love him, I adore him, so I wear his photograph. <laughs> Is it necessary to take photograph or to, not to necessary, keep it in, no. in the heart? It's the basic thing is in the heart, but I want to show, the, show to the world also. If, why should I be hypocrite? If I love him, oh. why should I not be honest and tell it? But if I can I love say him? this outfit is, is hypocrite, am I correct? Or if I say so? If somebody is only wearing a mala, a yeah. locket, and does not have love in the heart, then he is a hypocrite. If I, ha I have love in my heart and I am not wearing mala, I am again a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. Hypocrite means something inside and something else outside. So both are hypocrites. I am the honest person, I have the love and respect for Osho, and I am showing it. Yes, I do have. Mm. Now, Osho we are at the end of the program, and I have so many questions to mm. ask with you. But uh, most of the critics say that what also Taylor says, only 25% of his preaching is correct, fact. And most of his preaching or sayings are just a lie, they say. What do you say about him, them? My feeling is those people who are giving such comments, they have not read Osho. They have not heard him. Otherwise, they would never say such a thing. I think he has not lied ever. Uh -huh. He's the most honest person. Whatever he felt right in that moment, remember in that moment, he said that. Of course, after five years he might have changed because the situation changes. Mm -hmm. He may change. He, he's not addicted to the past. He's not holding to the past that I have given a statement, now I cannot change. Mm -hmm. He is always flexible, he is going with the flow of life. If situation changes, mm -hmm. he may give a, another statement totally different from what his past statement. That does not mean that was a lie, that yeah. was true in that moment. Yeah. In Nepal also, there are so many people who follow also, by heart, by practice. Uh, there are so many people also that they criticize also. What do you want to tell both people? To critics, I would say just read any of his book or just read, listen to any of his discourse, just a single discourse and their attitude will change. They will not be critics anymore, they will become lovers. And to the lovers, the people who are reading him, listening to him, to them I would like to say, please start meditating now. Yeah. Reading is not enough, mm -hmm. you have to meditate. Meditation. Yes, that is most important. Only then you can understand what Osho is explaining. Mm -hmm. 
otherwise it just becomes like a philosophy can they do meditation themselves or they have to go somewhere they can meditate. read in osho's books mm -hmm. the meditation techniques and they can just do it or they can do to go to some meditation center we have in kathmandu osho vatika in baluvatar they can come and visit there mm -hmm. and tomorrow i will go to chitwan in soraha we have a huge ashram there and more than 200 people will come there and stay there for a week for meditation mm -hmm. so that happens off and on and the uh, information you can gain from astha channel mm -hmm. our discourses are coming every day on astha channel at quarter to 7 indian time yeah so we give the information when next program will happen in india or in nepal Mm -hmm. Instead of blindly criticizing and following, we have to read the words first. Read and then do experiment. That experiment. is meditation. Oh. If you then criticize, then mm -hmm. your criticism has some value. Otherwise, it is just meaningless. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, also, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. So Today, I have talked with Osho Rajneesh's younger brother, Osho Salendra, about Osho's philosophy. Thanks for watching. Stay with us. Goodbye and Namaste.